Hey everyone, it's me, Arthur Cade, and here's Hank. Well, Henry Winkler, but he's written a book called Here's Hank. It's the ninth in this incredible series. Make sure to check it out. Hey everyone, it's me, Arthur Cade, and even though I'm tired from the Super Bowl last night, Henry what Winkler. What a you, game. What a game. Unbelievable, Unbel right? I was amazed. I'm a Giants fan, and I was cheering for Brady. Well, you know, my son and I, uh, he went to USC. We know Pete Carroll from USC. We are kind of Seahawks fans, you know. And uh, that man was amazing. Big T. He wanted that Super Bowl more Big than T. anybody, and he got it. We've got to get that soundbite over to Tom Brady. Henry Winkler calling him Big T. Oh, my God. <laughs> really? Congratulations. What a team effort. Unbelievable. Yeah. Speaking of team efforts. And how efforts, about Lady Gaga? She Lady was incredible. Gaga, I got to meet her once. Last spring at the NBC party, I shook her hand. I was so excited, I tripped over somebody. Hold on, I want to understand something. Yes. You played one of the most iconic characters in television history. When someone Lady, Lady Gaga meets you, yes. are they freaking out? I don't know, because all I know is that I am so <laughs> excited to meet her. Do you know, uh, I love meeting uh, people who can make music, because I can't, Right. you know? And Hank Zipser, also, he makes no music. Perfect segue to his new book. He's got a new book out. It's true. And he, he's very good with uh, potato salad. Uh, not great with a, an instrument uh, of music. He's actually not great with a lot of stuff. No, he, he isn't. He struggles. But he, you know what? His glass is half full. He just wants to spill it everywhere. I didn't realize your personal history. Yes. So preparing for this interview... You battle dyslexia. Yes. You, I, we still do. You, you so, never get over a learning challenge, but you learn to negotiate it. You were told you weren't going to make it, and next thing you I know, was you're, told I was I was never going to achieve. Is it crazy now to look back and here you are, Henry Winkler, and you've had this incredible career? No, because you know what I I am obsessed with talking to every student on this planet, every child on this planet that they have greatness inside them. At that time, when you were being told, no, yes. you're not good enough. You believe it. You did believe yes. it. You didn't have that drive, that Tom Brady drive that said, I'm gonna become. I did, but you have a drive to go where you wanna get to, and then I'm sitting in this chair with you now, and you believe underneath it all, underneath the smile, you think, oh well, I'm pulling the wool over their eyes and I'm stupid. When's the moment that you start saying to yourself, all right, I've got some momentum here. I'll I might make exactly it. exactly what it was. I'm saying 11.45 last Tuesday. What? That was the moment. Uh, you, you think you're stupid all the way, and then eventually you go, you know what? I don't think it's possible. I, I, I've accomplished this. I'm, I'm doing this. Maybe I'm not stupid. When you start having... The, I, I've read the whole Mary Tyler Moore. You book a little right. few lines there, and yes. it leads to— I had to... four lines on the Mary Tyler Moore show. The first week I landed in California, they let me ad lib it to, to eight. And then? Uh, I did um, Happy Days. And then? <laughs> I did the, um, uh, the Bob Newhart show. When Happy Days hits, yes. and it becomes— the, the hit of all hits during right. that generation, and you become the Fonz. What's, right. What was life like at that point? I'll, I'll tell you exactly. Scary, so I did not leave my apartment. Uh, I read a lot of my fan mail. I wrote back thank you letters on the back of Fonzie uh, pages in the script with Fonzie dialogue. I would write, hey, thank you for sending me uh, this wonderful gift. That's so cool. Yeah. But it was scary. It I mean, was scary. We were in uh, Dallas. We made a big appearance at uh, Neiman Marcus. 25,000 people came to say hello to the four boys, uh, Ron Howard, Anson Williams, Don Most, and me. And Anson whispered to me, he said, do we, do we deserve this? And I said, Anson, that's not really, they're here. So that's not the question. All you do is say thank you. 
having now interviewed you multiple times, yes. you are the most relaxed, nicest, funniest guy. But Thank the Fonz, you. the Fonz was the complete opposite. Right. So when he was everybody I wanted to be. Was it? But when people would meet you, yes. would you stay in the Fonz character? I would, would never do that. I used the Fonz um, at that appearance in Dallas when the crowd of 25,000 people separated uh, the four of us from our car that was going to take us back to the hotel. And I, and everybody was freaking out. How are we going to get to the car? They're going to kill us. And I said, as the Fonz, I said, all right, let me tell you something. You're <laughs> going to part like the Red Sea. And we're going to get to our car. And they did. They just... <laughs> and we walked to the car and got in. And, and, and I also used him on Sesame Street for the letter W. After the success of this character, was it difficult? Because anytime you yes. play an iconic character, is it tough to get work yes. after that? It is. You know, you think you're going to go from mountaintop to mountaintop, and what really happens is you're typecast. And what really is, they, they say, oh, we love him. He's such a good actor. But he was the Fonz. In Scream, they wouldn't put my name on the movie because uh, they thought I was associated with the Fonz, and it would knock the balance of the horror movie off. Were there moments, obviously you're going through happy days and you're like, I made it, I have this great success. Right. But then you're struggling afterwards. Were there moments where you said to yourself, man, I wish I never found the Fonz? Never. The Fonz was, first of all, too much fun. Uh, I built my house because of the Fonz. I sent my children to school and college because of the Fonz. I have never regretted that in my life. What I thought was... I have no idea to how to move from here forward. And when you don't know what to do, don't do anything. Because the answer will come eventually. I started to produce. Didn't care for that too much. I started to direct. I liked that a lot. In 1991, I started acting again. And then in 2003, I started writing these books with Lynn Oliver. What inspired... Authorship. The real truth? Yes. Filling time and space. Uh, <laughs> somebody said, hey, there's a lull in your career. Write books, you know, go in a different direction. And I went, that's crazy. I'm stupid. I can't write a book. Second time the man said it to me, a few months later, I said something that was really important. I will try. Introduce me to Lynn, same guy. Lynn and I met, and we've written 33 novels together. Do you enjoy do you enjoy it more than the acting because it's different. It, it uses a different part of your brain. It is fun. It uses my acting brain because we create scenes and I start talking as the characters, you know? Uh, and but I am the proudest outside of my family of these books. Why? No. Because they exist. On, I've said this before, but so I'm at a, a meeting and I'm talking to bookstore owners and book salespeople for all over the country, right? And I'm at a, a luncheon with them and I'm discussing the book and explaining, introducing Hank to them. And I look and my name <laughs> is on the book and I, I've, I forgot about it. I smelled it. I rubbed it on my body. I, I, I kissed it. I, I touched it. I forgot where I was. I'm, my brain literally turned to cream cheese. I love this. Yeah, it's true. That is, it, it happened exactly like that. Last time I spoke to you, yes. your TV show was about to come out, and it just got renewed for season two. How uh, cool is that? Okay, so we go uh, across the world. We go um, uh, George Foreman. Here's my impression of George Foreman. <clears throat> Anywhere we are in the world, George sits down, he naps. Bill, Bill Shatner, hi. I've written, I've read every book on the planet, and I'm going to tell you what's on every page. <laughs> Terry Bradshaw, you, you saw him on the Super Bowl last night. He's as big as Oklahoma, you know? And we're going now, uh, second season. What's, on, that, what's everybody getting in season two? We don't know. Uh, I, I am at one of the executive producers 
but I don't know where we're going and I don't know what we're doing so that I'm as surprised as everybody else. Speaking of EPing, I had yeah. no idea you were one of the EPs of MacGyver, the original MacGyver and yes. the new one. And the new one. How cool well, is the, that? The new one, you know, it's run by these wonderful people, uh, Peter Lenkoff and, and everybody um, that he works with. But I go and I sit with them and, and edit you know, when we talk about the show, and it's great. I mean, you know. I, I remember like the original. Did you come up to Richard Dean Anderson and were you like, listen, if this character hits, hide? Were you giving him some of the advice you had to go through? You know through? what? In the very beginning, uh, I'll tell you, when we first met him, we met a lot of really handsome men, you know? I mean, like, oh, my God. Big belt buckles and creased jeans, you know, and tall and high. And then he came in and he couldn't find his glasses to read the script. And that foible, that, um, that vulnerability, he had the part. So that's the key. You just screw up and you, know, you get the part. I it's love true. it. It's true. It's true. And he was a great leader on the set uh, in the original. He would uh, pick up uh, you know, equipment and he would walk up the mountain with the rest of the crew. They adored him. Why do you think Happy Days connected the way it did with America. One, because I think the style was fun. I think the music was fun. And the fact that it was placed in the 50s, which um, uh, Rest His Soul, Gary Marshall did on purpose, so that it would never be timed. It was never of a time. It was always in time somewhere. And the stories were relevant, um, you know, at the moment stories. Do not smoke, wear glasses, uh, you know, uh, eat uh, your vegetables. Uh, they were just normal friend stories. Did you ever envision Ron having the success? Yes. You saw it even at that young an age? I met him when he was 18. I was 10 years older than he was. I was the oldest teenager. I'm telling you, you met him. He's just personally powerful. He has a thing going on inside him that is unbelievable. He looks like a loaf of Wonder Bread, and he is the Con Edison Company. He's, I just interviewed him and Brian, and I was just like, you two are two of my favorites. Yeah. Hollywood duo that have had so much success. Yeah. It's incredible. And they met on Night Shift. Isn't that crazy? Yeah. That's how Hollywood works, though. Everybody meets on these weird little projects, and the next thing you know, they're this iconic... Amazing. It's incredible. Yeah. You mentioned Lady Gaga earlier. Yes. And one of the things I really loved about her performance was it didn't get political. You know what? I love it. Everybody is saying that. The fact of the matter is her music talks about being inclusive. Yep. So she did it through her music. Her music is in her. She writes it. It is part of her soul. You, She's daring. She is fearless. She is committed. I love you, Lady <laughs> Gaga. What do you think about Hollywood right now and the activism? Everybody's speaking out. What do you think about it? Okay, I'll tell you exactly what I think about it. I am an American. I was born in America. My parents were um, immigrants. If they did not get out of Nazi Germany, they would have been dead. I would not be here. I'm an American and I love my country. I mean, I adore my country. I'm a man, I'm a Jew, and I'm a professional. I'm a, and because I am all of those things first, I have a point of view. I have a right to say what my point of view is. You mean a, a conservative plumber has more right to say what they think than I do as an, as an actor? Uh, I, I am an American first. I love that. Greatest memory, Henry, in this incredible career. What's been the My greatest? children being really? born. That's a good one. The greatest memory. My grandchildren. My grandchildren, you know, my uh, daughter and my son-in-law are working on their house, so they've moved into our house. <laughs> and we have a one-year-old grandson and a, a five-year-old who just had his birthday in our house, a five-year-old grandson. Our granddaughters live 15 minutes down the street. Them running in the house, yelling and screaming and um, uh, doing karaoke uh, to, um, uh, what is it, what are they called? Um, Harry Styles. One Direction. One Direction. <laughs> Unbelievable. Uh, my, uh, my, they love Bruce Springsteen. Uh, they, they love the big man. Um, 
I love Bruce Springsteen. <laughs> I really do. Hi, Bruce. Hi. <laughs> how many times a day do people come up to you and just say how a much? A hundred. The Fonz and Happy Days meant to them? A hundred. But then it all depends on age. There's the Happy Days. Then there's Scream. That Water Boy. I forgot about um, Water Boy. <laughs> uh, oh, let's, and then there's a whole contingent of, uh, of um, Arrested Development, uh, Parks and Rec. And now, no matter where I go, people talk about the travel show better late than never. I loved it, by the way. I remember when I interviewed you before seeing it and then watching it. It was so genuine. It was really just there was authentic. No script. It was there great. were six cities, five cameras, no script. We went by the seat of our pants, and I ate pork vagina. Then I spit it out, but I, I ate it. Are there ever thoughts of slowing down, or are you having too much fun? I'm having too much fun. You're like Brady, having too much fun. I'm having too much fun. I win the Super Bowl every project. Are there ever down days? Do you have when you were you, down days meaning what? Down days where you think I where haven't I just relax or, or where you think I haven't done enough in this life or are you quite happy? I'm very happy. I have a bucket list. And one of the things one of the things the first thing on my bucket list is that my children and my grandchildren meet their destiny. That we the 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 earth does not blow up either from its core or from human beings standing on it. <laughs> That they, uh, that my children and grandchildren meet their destiny, and that I win a Tony. I would like to win a Tony. So that's, you want to do Broadway? That's the well. I've done it three times. I closed in one night. I ran for nine months with John Ritter, bless his soul, and then we closed in seven days. I would like if I'm going to win an award in my life. If that happens, I would like it to be the Tony. You mentioned John Ritter, and it brought me. A thought. You've worked with so many incredible people. Yes. Who's been the most mind-blowing talent that you've gotten to work with? All right. Well, uh, Ron Howard. Okay. Because he can do it all. And I'm about to do a show with Bill Hader. I love him. Okay. So Bill co-wrote with his partner, Alec um, uh, Berg, who does um, uh, Silicon Valley. Oh, it's the new HBO show. Yes. Barry, I think it's called, That's right? right. So he co-wrote it, co-produced it, directed it, stars in it effortlessly. Like if you were to think of a Tai Chi master who wears cloth shoes and almost does not touch the earth, kind of floats, Bill Hader. The funny thing about Bill is funny. He, he's hilarious, the impressions, but when you meet him in real life, he's the most low-key, down-to-earth dude. Because he's very shy. Yes. Very shy has three beautiful daughters, a beautiful wife. Um, he's mind-blowing. So what's everybody getting with Barry? Before I let you go, I want to hear the preview. He is, Barry, played by Bill Hader, is a hitman, <laughs> lives in Cleveland, drives a Pinto, gets a big job, comes to Hollywood, all of a sudden decides, hey, I don't want to be a hitman anymore. I want to be an actor. I'm his teacher. That's so cool. That's, everybody make sure to go get a Henry Stu book. Let's hold it up here. By the way, matching tie. Henry Winkler comes prepared. Matching Ferragamo tie, I believe. And here's Hank. Here's Hank. And this one is called Always Watch Out for the Flying Potato Salad. And you know what? They're comedies first, and the emotion is real. And this is number nine. So these are second grade books. Uh, first, second, and third grade. Can I just show one thing? You can show whatever you want. Okay. The font has never been used in America before in children's literature. And it helps the eye make friends with the page. Because, look, isn't it easier to I read? I wish normal books were written Hello? like this. <laughs> Hello? Hello? You could have this. <laughs> if you get a here, Hank. You're awesome, Henry. What an incredible career. The man is not slowing down, and I cannot wait for Barry, by the way. I know I've seen we'll previews on it. Again. I cannot wait for it.